how could they possibly ever think that such blackmail, such threats of violence, such terrorism uh, would actually convince President Trump to do what they want him to do? They may be somewhat delusional, Liz, in many ways, the way the North Korean regime is somewhat delusional about trying to get President Trump to back off on maximum leverage through uh, full sanctions on the North Korean regime. And we see that playing out in Iran as well. Uh, I think the Iranians are very much suffering, as you correctly note, under this latest round of economic sanctions when President Trump ended the waivers for eight countries, including major uh, importers such as China who are no longer able to both import oil from Iran and access the U.S. financial market. So this happened around April 22nd, and we learned shortly afterwards through intelligence sources that Major General Qasem Soleimani, who heads the paramilitary Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, essentially activated all of the proxy organizations in the Persian Gulf, in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen, to be prepared to escalate for military activities against U.S. assets and those of allies in the region. That was what triggered the president's uh, call for an aircraft carrier fleet to the Persian Gulf, a bomber fleet, and then about 500 to 900 troops there in order to make very clear to Iran that any military actions that are inimical to that of the United States or our allies will be met with a devastating response. But I think what we're seeing right now is diplomatic showdown between Iran and the United States because the Iranians are trying to disrupt global energy markets. They're enduring all of the pain of sanctions alone and they're trying to show China and Japan and Europe that they're going to have to endure some of the pain of the Trump sanctions on Iran as well. So what's the right move for the Trump administration here? I mean, you obviously can't let the Iranians uh, get away with what they're doing. At the same time, you don't want to play right into their hands if they're actively trying to escalate and start some sort of military conflict. So if you were advising the president today, what would you tell him is the best course of action? I would recommend a three-step course, Liz. One, first of all, do not relent at all on the maximum sanctions. Not at all. Remember that it was sanctions in the prior decade through 2010 that finally led Iran to the negotiating table. Unfortunately, those negotiations, I believe, were poorly handled by the prior administration and gave us a very weak and ineffective nuclear deal. I think President Trump is sincere in his belief that he can uh, come up with a better deal with Iran if the Iranians come to the table full faith. But the problem is I don't know if the Iranians are up to that. Secondly, we need to prepare our military to warn, to engage, and to potentially strike, especially at these swarms of small boats that the Iranians are heavily invested in to try to harass and to attack commercial shipping and military vessels in the Persian Gulf, in the Gulf of Oman. And I think thirdly, Liz, I would work very closely with the Russians. Remember, most of the tanker crew that are now in Iranian hands are of Russian ethnic origin. Work with the European Union, where they still have some leverage with the Iranians, and especially bring in the Chinese. The Chinese need Iranian oil for their economy. If there is disruption out of the Persian Gulf, the Chinese economy will be rocked far beyond what Trump's tariffs have already done. 